explain why we're um, doing coral restoration. How did you start? Well, it started, um, we actually had a pilot study um, with a couple of different agencies just to see if it would work. Um, the reason we're doing it is to help uh, build the reefs and eventually uh, more fish habitat as well. Um, but the pilot study started in 2006 and um, we had four outplant sites to see if the corals would grow. Now we had, during that time, we had a couple of hurricanes, so it wiped out a couple of the outplant planted sites. Um, and then we also had a cold water event which killed off a lot of the corals. But what was nice is some of those corals that we had in our nursery, the genotypes in the nursery, actually survived during that cold water event, um, whereas they didn't where that we collected from the parent colony. So we have that genotype and we can actually outplant to that site um, probably in the winter sometime. Is there a specific reason why you chose um, the specific coral, such as Cervicornis? It, Cervicornis is a very fast grower. It uh, is also a really good uh, reef builder. It grows about 10 to 20 centimeters a year, whereas other corals, um, the palmata, Acrocore palmata, grows uh, anywhere from 5 to 10 centimeters, and those are the two, obviously, the endangered species that we want to protect. Um, but uh, palmata is a little bit slower. And, the other corals are even slower than that. So we know that the cervicornis is almost like a weed and it'll grow really fast and it's, it's pretty hardy. And, um, even handling it, uh, it's, it handles really fast. All right. So why don't you guys tell me what you've been doing all day? Alright, well I'll explain the first dive. The first dive that we did, we were on the coral restoration um, site where they were starting to grow the corals. Who was growing the corals? Uh, Moat was. Basically what we did was we would take coral fragments and we would tie zip ties, well not zip ties, but uh, wire. wire, thank you. We would tie wire onto the corals and then string them from these pipe uh, trees and that way they would grow easier. Okay. Just because less algae gets on them when they're in the middle of the water column than when they're on the bottom. On a cement block. Kills them less. So what did you guys do on your second dive? Uh, on the second dive, we uh, we actually measured the growth of some of the staghorn on a hatch reef out here, uh, and they were already planted in there, so that way we were able to see their growth. So they, they were, were transplants yes. from the nursery. Yes, and we were trying to see if there was any bleaching or diseases or snails that could kill the coral, and, and a few of them we measured. Luckily, there, we didn't really notice anything. I mean, there were very few uh, bleaching on my part. I saw a few bleaching. But other than that, they seemed very healthy. Yes, very healthy. There were some pretty big ones, too. Yeah. And then some of them. All right. Thank you. What successful sites do you have already planted? We have four outplanted sites right now. Um, each site has 150 corals. And um, as as of right now, we it's we're getting ready to monitor our three month, which is what you guys are going to be doing. And um, after our first one month monitoring, everything looked really good. We had uh, we actually had a lot of growth, and you can actually see where the how we attach the coral is to a masonry nail, and then we zip tie it to the nail. The coral is already covered over the nail and the zip ties, so they have grown over that that sediment or that area, and also growing onto the reef. 